that was easy. Hi, so I'm going to show you a really weird way to minimize DFAs that's way different than the standard way that's done with, with the My Hill and the Road equivalence relation, with that table filling algorithm. Let's forget all of that. I'm going to show you a really simple way of minimizing DFAs. So we got a little DFA right here, and I got a red one, which is basically a copy of it. And the algorithm is to reverse the DFA, so get a DFA for the original language, and reverse it back. And you may think, how is that going to work? <laughs> it's just reversing and reversing back. Isn't that the original thing? The key is when we reverse the DFA, we keep only the states that are reachable from the start state, and that's all that you actually need. So here, what I'm going to do is I have a copy of this thing over here, but I, I have not marked what is the start and what the final states are over here. So the start state, I'm going to have a new start state here. And remember, when we have a when we have to make an NFA for the reverse of some machine, we have to have a new start state that epsilon transitions to all the previous final states, which are Q1 and Q2 in this case. So I'm going to have a transition epsilon transition there, and I'm going to have one there. All right, then what are the final states going to be in this thing over here? It's going to be whatever the original start state was, which is Q0 here. I'm going to have that be the only final state. Okay, so now let's convert this thing into a DFA because obviously these epsilon transitions are not corresponding to a DFA, they're corresponding to an NFA. So let's actually convert this to an NFA. So we have to figure out the epsilon closure of the start state, which is going to be S with Q1 listing them out in order and Q2. So here's a really also important point. To get this result to actually work, um, what you need to do is with this, only this state, you need to remove the S part. So I'm going to have S be removed from there, and I can move these together, hopefully a little better next time. So let's move those together. Why can I actually do that? Well, I can do that because S does not have any transitions going into it. They only go via epsilon transitions to the two states I just have here. So effectively, we can just remove that S state entirely. Okay, so then now let's actually convert this into a DFA. Well then, what do we actually do? Well, we need to figure out what to go on on 0 and 1. So on 0, where can I go from Q1 and Q2 on 0 and 1? Well, for Q1, notice that the transitions here are completely symmetric. So I didn't actually need to draw the transitions in reverse right here because there's one in both directions. So Q1 goes to Q0 on 0 and Q2 goes to Q3 on 0. So I'm going to have Q0, Q3 right here. And by symmetry, Q1 goes to Q3 on 1, and Q2 goes to Q0 on 1. And so I'm going to put those two transitions together because they go to the same pair of states. Okay, so then now what do we do? Well, Q0 and Q3 on 0, they're going to go to the 1 and 2 states on the transition 0 and 1. And so now for this DFA, what I need to do is to uh, figure out what the final states are. Well, it's going to be anything that has a Q0 in it, which is this guy. So I'm going to have that be the final state. And in this particular case, this is actually equivalent to the reverse DFA right here, because this DFA corresponds to strings of odd length. So if you take an odd length string and you reverse it, it's still odd length. And if you take an even length string and reverse it, it's still even length. And so therefore, this is going to be equivalent to this, but the method says that we need to do the reverse process again. So let's do the pro reverse process again. So now I'm actually not going to draw the S state because we know exactly what's going to happen. It's going to go to that state on an epsilon transition, so I don't need to include the S state again. So in blue, I'm going to have Q0, Q3 as being the, the start state here because it was a final state before. 
and the start state was q1 and q2 so it's going to be the final state in the in this new blue machine and the transitions are completely deterministic because it is a, in fact a dfa and so therefore i'm going to have the exact same set of states but effectively they just swapped positions but now in the blue thing what is going to be the final state well this thing in if you do the reverse process this thing is the final state now not the zero three guy so over here this is going to be the final state and you can actually see that it corresponds exactly to the white machine so it should correspond exactly in terms of final states to that of the blue machine because it's reflecting the original machine here and we're keeping all the state names around so i claim that that thing is a minimal minimum actually dfa for the original language l which happened to be the strings of odd length so why does this actually work so let's actually think about why this could possibly work so there are some important properties of the original DFA that we actually need to consider. So it's important that in this original white DFA, I have no states that are unreachable. So I can't have some state way out here that is just completely unreachable from the other states, in particular Q0. But I can't have a state that's unreachable from Q0 here. So we're going to actually prove something even stronger than what I said, which is that the blue thing is a minimum DFA for L, but that the yellow machine is a minimum DFA for the reverse language. And so if it's a minimum DFA for the reverse language, applying the reverse process again must be a minimum DFA for its reverse language, which happened to be the original language of the white machine. So all that we really need to prove is that the yellow machine is a minimum DFA for the reverse of L, the set of strings that are reversed from L, and that's the reverse language. So let's prove that. So I want to prove that the reverse plus the, the determinization process gives a minimum DFA for the reverse language, and it's important that the DFA that we make here is we we keep only the states that we actually compute we don't do all two to the end possible states in the in the subset construction process so here i let's say we have the original dfa right here we have the intermediate state which is the reversed nfa so it's not it's just an nfa it's not minimized or anything and then that result after you determinize it so what I want to show is that the yellow thing is the minimum of the original DFA's reverse. So it helps to show this by considering two states over here and showing that if we have two different states that are equivalent to each other, which could be merged, then that gives a contradiction. So let's consider two states over there. So I'm going to have a state let's call it a right there and another state that's i'm going to call b they could be final states or not it doesn't really matter and let's say that they're equivalent well equivalence means that if we take these two states a and b and read any string w let's call it w then no matter what happens then we either get the same state or the same type of state with regard to acceptance so it's either that no matter what string you read from these two states, you either always in a non-accept state or you always end up in a, an accept state for every string. So it could be that one string always goes to an ex, uh, accept state, one goes to a non-accept state, but they always answer exactly the same. And we're supposing that we have two different states here in the supposedly minimal thing. And so therefore, what we will show is that these two states really are the same. So the su supposition that they are different is wrong, and so they, therefore they must be the same state. So how do you actually prove that? Well, here, the, where did the DFA come from? The DFA came from this guy right here. And so therefore, these two states correspond to two subsets of states right here, just sets of states. So here, this is going to, let's say that A is a whole subset of states. I, I know it kind of looks like a state, but uh, it refers to a subset of states. 
and A and B could be in common, they could be disjoint, it doesn't actually matter for our purposes here. So now let's actually look at those subsets. So if I have a subset of states A right here and another subset of states B, let's look at a pair of states, one in A and one in B, and let's show that they must have some property. So let's say that we have a state P in A and another state Q in B. So now let's think about the original DFA that we had. So since we have the original DFA, let's move these over here. So in the original DFA, we had this start state over here. So I'm gonna draw it in white because this is corresponding to the original DFA, and that's the start state. What we must have happen is that in the original DFA, since every state was reachable from the start state, then that means that there's some string that goes from Q0 to P. And I have no idea what the string is, but some string goes there because every state was reachable. So let's call that string uh, W. So let's think about in the reversed NFA what happens. So if we read the, the W string in reverse order, then we must follow the exact same set of transitions all the way back to Q0 in the minimized, in the reversed NFA, not the minimized D, quote unquote DFA or anything, only in the reversed NFA. So here, if I go back exactly the same way, but in reverse order, then I'm gonna have the reverse string right there. And so now if we think about the, the reverse DFA after the conversion, what we're gonna have happen is if we still read the reverse to W string, then we're going to be accepted. And so for that reason, whatever final state we land in, we must land in some final state. So if we re read W reversed, we land in some final state. Note that Q0 is the only final state in the NFA, so Q0 is involved in here somewhere, but it can be any subset of states in there as long as it has Q0 in it. And so therefore we will go back to a final state because Q0 was a final state in the reversed NFA. So now let's suppose that A is equivalent to B, which is this property that we have up here. So then what can we actually use off of that? So that means that if it's really equivalent, then reading any string from these two will have the ex same accept answer, whether it's accept or reject. So then if we think about that in the reversed DFA, the one that we, we minimized, quote unquote, then we must have exactly the same behavior if we read W reversed, because we assume that they're equivalent. So then what can we do based off of that? Well, this there must be some state, oops, there must be some state in B here that has some way of getting to Q0. So because the reverse transitions may not correspond to a DFA, and in fact it almost always won't consider be considered a DFA, it could have a bunch of choices that it makes, but some choices of things to read will get you back to Q0, okay? Well then, what will happen here? And, and that's actually true of P also, but we just look back at this exact same set of transitions in reverse order here. So what does that actually tell us? So then if we reverse the, the red piece right here and do the exact same set of transitions, then we are gonna end up at Q reading the reverse of the reverse of W. And so therefore, we will, since we're going along the same set of transitions, we will end up back at Q. But that means since the original thing was a DFA, this can't happen. And so P and Q must be the same state because the original thing was a DFA. And so therefore these two are exactly the same string. And so therefore they must end up at the exact same place. And so therefore, that gives a contradiction about these two states right here. And so therefore we get the contradiction that we want because if we assume that they're equivalent, then that means that this state exists, but it must be equivalent to some state in here. They must literally be the same state. And so therefore A and B really are the same set of states right here, which corresponds to the same states over here. And so therefore, if we assume that they're different, they really are the same because we get a contradiction. And so therefore, this DFA right here 
must have the minimum number of states for its language, which is the reverse language by construction. And so by doing this process twice, we get a DFA that's minimum for the original language, which is pretty dang cool. What's the runtime of this thing? It's exponential in the worst case because the conversion process from an NFA to DFA may take exponential time. And actually you have to do it twice, which is kind of annoying, but in practice is actually very fast. And it's actually very, very, very easy to implement once you have once you have the reverse process, which is actually not that hard to implement, and the NFA to DFA conversion, which is also not hard to implement. So once you have both of those, you are completely done, which is actually pretty cool. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave thoughts about this particular algorithm into the comments down below. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That was easy. That was easy. That was easy.